You already know what it is. It's your boy Lay Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, Nukes Top 5. You up the bat. Bah! Bitch, I'm drowning up in it. Most of you niggas is lazy. Half of you niggas full gazy. Yeah, I be spitting that crack shit. Cause I was born in the A. It's your boy Lay Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Appreciate time, appreciate life in 2021. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos, man. All right, we back with another Nukes Top 5, man. Y'all wanted me to do more. We back with another Nukes Top 5, man. Before we get into this, man, I need you to drop with you in the chat. Let me know that you with me. Also, share this with one of your friends, man. Just one, just one. But look, so this is a top five ghost video. So scary, you'll quit the internet. Let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's poppin'? Let's get it. Top five ghosts caught on camera, hanging around. Japanese paranormal investigator Gachan from the YouTube channel Clip Store sets out to investigate a creepy old abandoned house in Nagasaki, Japan. The house is said to be extremely haunted. Locals claim that there is a sinister curse on the property after a family mysteriously passed away inside the home under absolutely horrible circumstances almost 15 years ago. As the home is fairly small, Gachan decides to go alone and brings only his camera. Once inside, things quickly get very creepy. The house still the same as it was left? 14. Everything in the house feels very nostalgic. Footsteps. Someone there with him. Well, you better get the fuck. There's someone on the second floor. He turned the light out. What do I do? Yeah, leave. You should leave. They already know I'm here, right? Boy? Is anyone there? The paranormal investigator believes he might not be alone inside the house and heads upstairs to investigate. He tripped. He tripping, bro. Is he in there by himself or not? Gaichan finds shattered glass and creepiest of all, a knife. Soon after, he hears the sound of a bell coming from somewhere inside the house. He searches every room, but he finds nothing and no one to explain the creepy sounds. 
すがにこのままでは帰れないよ、ね、さっきねちょっと物音が激しかったと思われる部屋いるんですけど家中探してみたんですけど誰もいないんだよ動物でもなさそうだしさでなんかさっき多分あれ仏壇の鐘の音だよねちょっと30分だけ検証して帰ろうと思います Eventually, the ghost hunter has had enough of the creepy, unexplained noises and decides to just go home. As he makes his way down the old, creepy stairs, he captures something absolutely horrifying. A pair of legs can be seen dropping from the ceiling at the top of the stairs right behind the ghost hunter. Gai Chan leaves the abandoned house having no idea what he has just recorded until he reviews his footage at home. What? The horrifying sight of the creepy, unexplained legs shocks him and his viewers. And now, Gai Chan believes that the house is truly haunted. But either way, true or not, the footage is very disturbing. Right. You can watch this entire investigation over on the YouTube channel, Clip Store. Hell no. Like something from a nightmare. Christina, an avid watcher of the YouTube channel Paranormies, reached out to the two paranormal investigators about terrifying events she experienced while staying in room 313 at the Norwood Hotel in Winnipeg, Canada. Christina says that back in 2008, she stayed at the hotel alone for two nights while attending a convention. Her first night in room 313, at around 2 a.m., Christina wakes up completely paralyzed. In absolute horror, she watches as a man with a sinister grin stares at her from the darkness, peeking around the corner leading to the bathroom.、Fuck. She passes out and then doesn't wake up until hours later, and she says she immediately vomited. Christina calls her boyfriend, who tries to calm her down and suggests that she was probably just experiencing a terrifying incident of sleep paralysis. But the next night isn't any better. Christina has a nightmare in which she sees a man on fire floating outside her window. She wakes up to her ringing phone. It's her boyfriend, and he is in near hysterics. He says that he had a very vivid dream that a man broke into her room and did horrible things to her. Christina immediately just gets up and leaves the hotel. The next morning, she returns to the room to grab her things and she's shocked. The window is wide open and someone has rummaged through her suitcase. She calls her boyfriend and he claims that he has no recollection of ever having called her the night before. Christina says that the experience is a complete mystery because the Norwood Hotel has no history of any reports of supernatural activity. The Paranormies team, Jordan and Johnny, head、Whoa. out to investigate room 313 at the Norwood Hotel、Whoa. to see if they can find evidence of anything paranormal. At first, the guys don't really capture much of anything, and they actually begin to wonder whether the story might have just been sleep paralysis after all. But then the team's equipment begins to act very strange, especially around Jordan. What are you thinking so far? I'm thinking that. It could have just been a sleep paralysis episode. You know? It could have been wrong. wrong. It sounded like wrong. And it won't focus on you. Really? Now it is. When Johnny wonders aloud if Christina experienced sleep paralysis instead of something paranormal, the spirit box seems to answer wrong. And Johnny's camera suddenly won't focus on Jordan. When Johnny begins to use an SLS camera, he again experiences a very odd malfunction. It won't even pick you up. It won't pick me up? No. What if I like, go like this? No, it won't pick you up. Really? That's weird. It wouldn't, it's like, what the hell's going on? It wouldn't pick, it was blurring you out. Is there something around me right now that's interfering with the electronics? It won't pick Jordan up. The SLS camera does not register Jordan at all. Even creepier, 
The team has brought a motion-activated doll with them and placed it in the bathroom. What the fuck? It too now begins to malfunction. The doll won't go off. Bro, what Jordan, the fuck? What? Come look. Nah, bro. I'm gonna try to make it through this one. This one too. Just... The doll won't go off. We just changed batteries. Look at this. Wow. Usually she doesn't shut up. Uh, what? You walk in front of me. Okay, hang on. Stay there. Flip it around. I want to just keep this in one shot to see. Well, what? There she goes. Whoa. But she's not making any she's noise. She's not making any noise. That is weird. She's not saying anything. Whoa. The motion activated doll doesn't detect any of the motion that the two friends create in front of it. Then suddenly, without reason, it begins to work again. Jordan and Johnny sit down at the hotel beds. That's when they hear something truly bizarre. What is that noise? Did you turn the light out? You hear it still? It's like a tapping. I'll check it out. Heavy. Heavy? You hear it still? I can still hear it from here. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure where it's coming from. It almost sounds like, yeah, like, like water. Oh my God. Nobody. The soft sound of tapping can be heard coming from somewhere inside the bathroom, but the two friends can't find the source. A loud sound can be heard from the main door, but they find no one outside in the hallway. Now, that's all very creepy, but... Did you see it? When Jordan gets up to investigate the tapping inside the bathroom, he walks past a mirror. Yet, he has no reflection. Even though earlier and also later in the investigation, his reflection is very clear. What? Now everything that's happening seems to be centered around Jordan for some reason. Almost as if something sinister has attached itself to him, as it did to Christina years earlier. Bro, I'm getting chills. Bro. Now perhaps it could all be explained as coincidental equipment failure and a very bizarre compression error. But what happens next is much harder to explain. As the two investigators lay down for the night, they set up a laser grid and turn on a motion activated REM pod and K2 meter. They fall asleep and leave a camera recording throughout the night. At around 4.15 a.m., the REM pod and K2 meter both go off, waking the two guys. What happens next is downright chilling. A shadow figure can be seen obstructing the laser grid and appears to be slowly moving towards Jordan until it seems to be right on top of him. Could this be the haunting apparition of the man that Christina saw in room 313 years earlier? Whatever it is, the Paranormies team did not discover this terrifying figure until after they uploaded their investigation to YouTube. It was pointed out by viewers. So, is room 313 haunted? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. You can watch this man. entire investigation and much more over on the YouTube channel, Paranormies. Bro, I'm getting chills, bro. Weird world. Nah, this... Now, the strangest thing about this next paranormal video might be the source, because this video was released by the actual mayor of the city of Armenia, Colombia, Jose Manuel Rios. So the security guard in this video says that he saw a male figure descend the stairs inside the mayor's office. He pursues the man, but the guy seems to vanish into thin air. The security guard can be seen on CCTV searching the area. 
But then things take a terrifying turn. They left him there? In the video, the security guard appears to be suspiciously looking around the area, seemingly confused. Then suddenly an unseen force seems to attack Damn. the man and throw him into a banner. The guard can be seen looking around in panic with no assailant in sight. He then suffers another attack and two guards hurry over to help him. The somewhat shaken mayor of Armenia says that, quote, a bishop and other religious leaders will come to bless the mayor's offices and that they will, quote, bring God's blessing to every corner of this workspace. Now, it seems highly doubtful that the mayor of Armenia, Colombia would suddenly release a fake ghost video. So just what do you think happened to this security guard? An anonymous woman from Florida is on vacation at the beach when far in the distance along the ocean, she spots something that she simply can't explain. She grabs her phone and begins to record. Is that a UFO? I'm gonna analyze this when I get home. Cause that, whatever that is, it's looking for something. Damn, I lost it. Oh my God, it's flying so fast. Where the f did it go? Wow. Oh boy, I'm losing my mind. An unidentified flying object can be seen hovering above the water. Then without warning, the flying object suddenly just reverses course and darts away at an incredible speed. So just what do you think this could be? So analyze this when you get home. I'm gonna analyze this when I get home. And then let me know what you think. In another strange video, Facebook user Eder Olivas is on the road late one night driving down the Saltillo Torreon Highway in Mexico. Eder is a little drowsy and sees something that he believes might just be an optical illusion or simply his mind playing tricks on him so late at night. But when he gets home, he decides to check his dash cam footage just in case. And he's shocked to find that what he saw was very real. A lady running? A woman wearing a long white dress can be seen dangerously running down the busy highway. Edder believes he might have captured a ghost on his dashboard camera and shares his video to Facebook. Now this stretch of highway has seen countless deadly accidents over the years in which many people lost their lives under horrible circumstances. The accidents happened so frequently on this road that just 10 days after Edder captured this unidentified woman on camera, Another woman and her partner lost their lives in a horrible freak accident on the exact same road. So could the Saltillo Torreon Highway be haunted by a deadly presence? Let me know what you think. Damn. The Little Place in the Woods. Dutch urban explorer Mark Roloff from the YouTube channel Mark Ben Ick travels to a remote abandoned lodge in the countryside of Belgium. Over 10 years ago, a woman named Anne Sophie fell in love with the rustic house 
and suck all of her savings into renovating the property into a countryside restaurant and bed and breakfast. But she was soon met with terrible news. You see, the local township decided to remove the only road that led to her new lodge deep in the woods. After a four-year battle with the local government and nearing bankruptcy, and Sophie just gave up. Exhausted and defeated, the woman tragically took her own life inside the uncompleted bed and breakfast. Wow. Ironically, only two weeks after her death, news came down that the township decided that the road was actually going to stay after all. Ever since her tragic passing, the lodge has been abandoned. Dang. Now, Mark Roloff is not a paranormal investigator. He's an urban explorer who searches out hard-to-reach abandoned locations in the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany, and shares his experiences on his YouTube channel, Mark Benick. This video was supposed to be just like his other explorations, but things took a bizarre turn. After Mark posts his video to YouTube, his viewers notice some things that he just didn't. And this is when things start to get a bit creepy. As Mark explores the property all alone, it seems that a woman's voice can be heard. It's the daytime, so that's smart. You have to need to put bald liquor. What gaaf dit. Oud VOC schip. Now, as I mentioned before, Mark didn't even notice the strange female voice in the background of his video. So he just mixed music right over it. Mm. But I went in and edited the audio and attempted to remove most of the music and background noise. What gaaf dit. Now it's unclear what the faint female voice is saying and Mark says he has no idea where the voice could have come from. But that's not all because Mark captured something else. Something downright chilling. I see that the kelder well under water staat, so helaas can I die kelder niet meer in. <laughs> wel aparte koelkast trouwens, it's gewoon helemaal meegemobileerd. Maar daar buiten zijn nog veel meer gebouwen waar ook van alles in zou staan. Dus daar gaan we ook kijken. Maar hier bro, I'm getting chills, bro. Right? And the music he be playing. Super mooi, kijk dan. Helemaal geborduurd, dit schilderij. In the corner, behind the door, the dark figure of a woman can be seen just standing there. Mark has no idea what he has just captured and continues filming, completely unaware of the terrifying apparition that he just recorded. Now I reached out to Mark and he says that throughout his exploration he felt like something was just a bit off, but he wasn't overly concerned. However, after watching his video back and taking note of what his viewers pointed out, he has no idea what he captured, and to this day, this shadowy figure is a complete mystery. Could it be the tragic spirit of Anne Sophie still in her failed bed and breakfast? Let me know what you think, right behind you. Paranormal investigator Ricky Velasquez is challenged to explore an abandoned hey. house in Mexico that is said to be extremely haunted. Ricky's fans don't think he'll be able to stay inside the creepy home for longer than an hour. So Ricky takes the challenge and broadcasts live to YouTube as he heads inside the house. He has no idea why the location might be haunted or what dark history might have taken place there. But he soon realizes that the supernatural rumors about the house might be a bit more real than he thought. Okay, esto sí me, esto sí me huele mal. It smells bad. Ricky has been inside for only 18 minutes when he already begins to experience strange phenomena. Somewhere inside the house, he hears a loud bang. So he heads upstairs and continues his exploration. These people are crazy. Hola. Ay, wey. Okay. Pero me ha tocado cosas más feas. I've never seen uglier stuff. Okay, it's a balcony, okay? It's a balcony of words. It's a balcony of words. It's a balcony of words. It's a 
no, 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 ya valí madre. Oh, la bestia. Se va a caer. It's going to fall off. No, 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 no. What the fuck going on? ¿Qué mierda es eso? The paranormal investigator almost falls through the ceiling to the floor below. But that's not the only thing that shocked Ricky's live viewers. Because this time, did you hear it? Right before Ricky nearly falls through the floor, an eerie voice can be heard quietly whispering. Still on the second floor, Ricky begins to repeatedly hear strange sounds coming from right behind him. But every time he turns around, no one there. He attempts to get a glimpse at what he's been hearing by pointing the camera at himself and the room behind him. Ricky now hears the creepy whispering himself and starts to think that he might not be alone. But he gathers his courage, determined to continue exploring. He heads into the upstairs bathroom, and what happens next is absolutely horrifying. Hola. Empiezo a sentir helado. ¿Qué se escuchó? Hola. Ricky runs away in abject terror as he sees the pale figure of a woman standing right behind him. When slowing down and enhancing the footage, it almost looks like the strange apparition has one completely empty white eye. So after only making it 30 minutes inside the abandoned property, Ricky has had enough and just leaves. So is it real or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. All right, that was Nukes Top 5, five go Bruh. If you made it to the end, drop real one. Bruh, he getting, this, this shit getting too crazy, bruh. This shit getting crazy. You already know what you gotta do, self-love, positivity. Till next time, fire squad, I got you and you know it. Hey, yo.